Well, again, good morning, everyone. It's good to see so many people out here today. We give a special shout to our folks in the Orlando area. We're so thankful for them. Amen. And I want you to notice something this morning. I've got a $5 bill here in my hand, a $5 bill. Now, many of us in here today can remember when that $5 bill meant something. In the first place, it was pretty hard to come by. You worked many days, daylight till dark, for that $5 bill. Some of us here remember also when that $5 bill would actually buy something. Not so much today, though. For many of us, maybe we can remember too far back. You know, at one time you could take that $5 bill and you could take $4 of it and you could buy quite a few groceries. You could go to your local grocery and you could buy four, five, maybe six days worth of groceries with that $4. Now that gave you $1 left over. Now you could take that $1 and you could go to your local filling station and you could buy four gallon of gas with that $1. Now I didn't make a mistake there, you can buy four gallon of gas with that $1. We can also remember the mom-and-pop restaurants. A cup of coffee was a nickel. Now, if you went to a little higher-class restaurant, it would cost you a dime. But many of these restaurants, you could buy a good plate lunch for 65, 70 cents. For many years, I ate at the same mom-and-pop restaurant every day for lunch. You could buy a home-cooked plate lunch a piece, a slice of homemade pie, a cup of coffee, you give them a dollar, and you'd get a little bit of change back. Now, I don't need to tell you, those days are gone forever. Today, in many restaurants, that $5 bill will hardly cover even two cups of coffee. It'll hardly, even some places it won't cover two cups two cups of coffee. And you know, maybe we say it don't buy much, but you know this $5 bill does say something very important. If we turn that bill around, you'll notice a building on that $5 bill or any other bill. If you look at the top of that building, there's a tremendous message. It says, in God we trust. In God we trust. You know, that's quite a message today. This was put into law on January the, or on July the 20th, 1956. Congress passed a law that that would be on our money. And it was signed into law by then President Dwight Eisenhower. That's the thought, the title of my thought for this week, In God We Trust. The word trust means to be confident, secure, or careful. We find the word trust many times in the book of Psalms. If you would turn to Psalm 31, that's 31, that's on page 612, 612, if you have an old school field Bible. Psalm 31. And I'd like to read verses 1 through 5. Of verse 31. Here the psalmist says, In thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. Let me never be ashamed. Deliver me in thy righteousness. Bow down thine ear to me. Deliver me speedily. Be thou my strong rock for an house of defense to save me. For thou art my rock and my fortress. Therefore thy name's sake lead me and guide me. Pull me out of the net that they have laid privately for me. For thou art my strength. 
Into thine hand I commit my spirit. Thou hast redeemed me, O Lord God of truth. And I'd ask you a question. Do we as a nation today really put our trust in God? Do we put our trust in God or are we like those in Psalm number 20? Let me read back to you. You don't have to turn, turn to it. But in Psalm 20, it, it is on verse 608. I'd like to read Psalm 20, verses 5 through 9. It says, We will rejoice in thy salvation, and in the name of our God we will act up our banners, set up our banners. The Lord fulfill all thy petitions. Now I know that the Lord, that the Lord saveth his anointed. He will hear him from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. They that are brought down, they are brought down and fallen, but we are risen and stand upright. Save, Lord, let the king hear us when we call. They, you can see they were trusting in worldly things and not in God. And folks, it's not too much difference today. Paul says in 1 Timothy 6, 17, he warned against putting trust in uncertain riches, urging instead to trust in the living God. Colossians 2, 8, he talks about the redemption we have in Christ Jesus. We are not to follow after the rudiments of the world. In Psalm 31, David said, In thee do I put my trust. Again, David wrote in Psalm 118, verse 8, It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. In closing today, let me read a portion of Psalm 28. Here the psalmist says, The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in him, and I am helped. Therefore my heart greatly rejoices, and with my song I will praise him. Folks, the next time you pull a bill out of your wallet or your purse, and you give that bill to someone, Maybe you should tell them about what it says on the back. In God we trust. You might just accidentally open someone's eyes. They might happen to, happen to see. They might give it a thought. And that is my thought for this week today. In God we trust. Thank you. <laughs>